Hey there summoners, it can be tough to keep up with the league's meta. Just when you're getting the hang of a new flavor of the month pick, it gets nerfed into the ground or something else pops up as a new broken pick. And then we have the placebo patches, sort of like this one. Don't get me wrong, there are definitely a few decent changes on the list, but the majority aren't really changing much at all. Not all buffs mean something is immediately strong, and not all nerfs means that a pick is dead. With only 2 weeks per patch, it'd be impossible to sort out what's going on on your own before the next one rolls around, and that's why, today, I'll be giving you our new updated tier list for patch 13.7 to help you out. This is a loose ranking of what picks are the strongest for carrying in solo queue right now. I'll also be highlighting a champ or two in each role, talking about what makes them good, and also what the hardest matchup is. That way, you know what to ban when you want to play it, or what to pick when you're against it. We'll be starting things out with our top lane tier list. The first pick that we have here is Olaf. While he's on the nerf list for this patch, it means basically nothing. He's so overtuned early game that you're still going to be running a train on anybody in the laning phase. If you land your axe, pop Ghost and Ignite and run down your opponent for an easy kill. Getting a single early kill with Olaf guarantees you snowball hard. He's easily able to 1v2 jungle ganks post 6, and goes on to be a monster in the mid game, being able to both side lane and team fight super well. As Olaf, the main champion that you want to ban out most is Fiora. You do beat her pretty hard early on, but she definitely outscales you. She really only needs to hit her first completed item, and she can start looking to 1v1. The only way you can stay ahead of her the entire game is if you snowball super hard early game, but that requires you play super aggressive. Even then, if your jungler isn't helping you dive and provide counter ganks when you need them, you're probably not going to get the lead that you need to keep her out of the game. The second top lane that we've got for you over here is Riven. After a pretty good span of time, Riven is borderline unviable, and lately, she's been looking up quite a bit as a pick. The current meta is pretty good for her, and back on 13.4, she got some really nice buffs for herself. And now, Death Stance is getting his ability Haste back. Being such a spam-heavy champion, that is great news for Riven, and she's definitely pretty up there for top laners that can hard carry games. She takes some time to master, but once you do, you have a champion that can frontline in teamfights while still dealing ridiculous amounts of damage. But no matter how good you are at Riven, there's one matchup that you'll want to avoid having to deal with. Olaf is an absolute menace. With multiple combos at your disposal, Riven can go for all types of different trading patterns. But no matter what you choose in this lane, you won't be winning against Olaf. Forcing an all-in is even worse than going in for short trades, and you can never 100-0 Olaf, and as soon as you're done spamming spells, he'll just auto you and heal off of you to death. Post 6, it only gets worse. Riven is heavily reliant on her W stun and mini knockup on Q3 to disrupt foes and kite them between trades, but Olaf just presses R and then just runs you down. Now, let's take a look at our jungle tier list. Here, the champion that we'll be highlighting is Rengar. He's one of, if not the best jungler in the game right now, with super high snowball potential that allows you to close games out fast with an early lead. And he's not really that difficult to play. You just need to understand a couple of basic combos and tricks, and learn your damage so you know when you're able to one-shot foes or not. One reason that he's especially good right now is that it's such a farm-heavy meta. Not because Rengar himself is an AFK farm champion, but instead, because he's really good for invading the enemy jungle and going for kills to shut down your opponent early game. The other reason the farm meta is really good for Rengar is that he also tends to get bullied by early game duelists. Which is exactly why your ban when playing Rengar should be Rek'Sai. If you're on the topic of early game junglers, literally no pick even comes close to Rek'Sai. Forget invading her. She'll probably be the one looking to come to kill you in your jungle. Or she'll use her faster clear speed and powerful early ganks to snowball off of lanes, putting herself and her whole team ahead, effectively closing out the game before you can even come online. Even if you do manage to get a bit fed, Rek'Sai is also great for nullifying you in fights. Her Tremor Sense reveals where you are in your ultimate, and she can unburrow to knock you out of your leap. The second jungler to go over is Graves. The issue with Graves has always been that people usually go either Lethality or Bruiser builds on him. One allows you to blow up squishies, while the other one makes you sort of a mid-tier damage frontliner. But neither of that allows you to go with the big DPS that you need to deal with tankier foes. Well, with the crit damage and his autos being buffed, building the appropriate crit items on him should fix that. When it comes to pure damage, carry junglers, he's up there in the top list now. As an added bonus of his damage output, he's also mobile, has high base stats, and gets a ton of armor with his E. So you're also really hard for the enemy team to catch you out and blow you up in fights. But all of that means nothing when you run into Gragas. In the early game, he beats you out 1v1, outganks you, and is more useful in skirmishes. Plus, he spikes a lot harder on one item, so he can just start to push his team ahead super fast as the game transitions to the mid game. Being a magic damage dealer, he completely ignores Graves' naturally high armor, so you either give up damage to itemize MR or risk being one shot. Next up, we have our mid lane tier list. In this role, our first pick that we'll be talking about is Pantheon. If you like to win games fast and hard, he's the one for you. He does way too much damage early game, and his combo is point and click, so you can bully just about any lane opponent with ease. 
He also has great roaming power, with the same stun and high damage that easily makes him good in solo lane, while also allowing you to work with your jungler to easily get kills elsewhere. Post 6, his ultimate takes things even further, quite literally allowing you to put a ton of pressure on the enemy side lanes since you can make it all the way to those lanes after taking a few steps away from mid. But there's a champion that can make it nearly impossible to leverage all of Pantheon's strong early game assets. When up against Lissandra, you feel like there's not much that you can really do. She has just as much pushing power at her disposal, so the shove and roam tactic doesn't work very well. You also can't really force trades on her, since she slows you on your approach and you can't ever actually get in range of your W to get on her. Team fights aren't much better. Since Lissandra's ult is pretty much instant, she can usually pop you with that before your E goes off, allowing her team to blow you up. The other mid laner to consider adding to your pool is Katarina. She's sort of always a scary champion in solo queue, and giving her just a bit more damage like she's getting this patch can go a long way. While most assassins are forced on blowing up a single target in fights, Katarina has the tools to straight up 1v9 games. You almost always find a way to reach that point as Katarina. Her early game damage is surprisingly high. If an opponent disrespects you, there's a good chance that you can solo kill them as early as level 2 or 3. If they do show you some respect, then you can just roam. For whatever reason, cat roams are just way more likely to work than other roams with other champions, and you'll basically always get a double kill bot lane. The champion that you'll want to ban when picking Katarina is Trindamir. While there aren't a ton of mid laners that have this pick in their pool, trust me, you don't want to run into the ones that do. This lane is absolutely unplayable. If you try to poke with daggers, he just easily heals up. If you try to take it up a notch and go in for your dagger, you're going to be taking a lot more damage than you'll actually deal to him, and again, he'll heal it up. Usually the answer to a champion that just out sustains you is going all in, but he's got you there too. He just pops his ultimate and uses that 5 second window to kill you instead. Taking things down to the bot lane, we'll lead off with our carried tier list. The pick that we'll be highlighting for this role is Yasuo. The buffs that he got this patch were pretty huge. While it may not seem like it, the extra damage on his E is going to mean a lot in early trades. So much so that he's going to be able to contend with even the strongest ADC picks. With the right supports, he could even be considered S+, plus or even OP tier. So if you have a duo that can reliably play some synergistic picks, 100% add him to your pool. Since Yasuo counters traditional ADCs so hard, you'll be looking to ban a super disruptive support, Alistar. Anytime that you look to go in for a trade, he'll disengage you, or worse, knock you into his tower, making it very difficult for you to ever take a winning fight. He has no abilities that you can win wall, and in team fights, he'll also be able to knock you away from the safety of your win wall so the rest of his team can blow you up. Lastly, we have our support tier list. The pick that we'll be going with to round out our list today is Annie. With how strong that she's been getting since her little revamp, the tiny nerf that she's getting on this patch is a placebo. She's still gonna be very good. We have Annie listed as a pressure support because in lane, she is. She has very high range, so you can poke down foes, and post 6, her burst potential is crazy. But as the game goes on, she becomes a god tier all around her, with the ability to roam and make picks, engage team fights, or hang back and play like an enchanter to keep allies safe. And she does all of this so easily. Well, except when you end up against Bard. That should be who you ban when you pick Annie, because he's the only champion in the game that can effectively neutralize your early game. He outtrades in lane, and has the potential to look for early roams that can win the game for the enemy mid and jungle. Most bards tend to build pretty tanking, so you won't have any great chances to catch him out and blow him up. You'll still have your great scaling, but that's not worth letting bard be the wrench that gets thrown into your early game, and potentially stops you from reaching that point. And that wraps up things for our 13.7 tier list. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be up to date on what's going on in the meta. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.